So now we move to the uh, contributed paper, and the first one is by Luca Rossini from University of Milan. The title of the, pre the presentation is Bayesian Multivariate Quantile Regression with Alternative Time Variant Volatility Specification. You have uh, 25 minutes, then we have 10 minutes for the discussion and 10 minutes for general Q&A. So the floor is yours. Thank you very much for giving us the chance to present the paper. Uh, it's always nice to come after Monica. Uh, she was my supervisor, so it's always a pleasure to listen to her. This is a joint paper with Matteo that you already seen. He was answering before and was doing the discussion. And then also within Francesco Ravazzolo that a lot of, of you may know uh, working on forecasting techniques. Uh, the title already told you a little bit what we will do. There is no surprise, let's say. So we go directly on the title and say, okay, you are doing vision, you are doing multivariate quantile regression, and then we change a little bit the literature. So what we are trying to do it is, we are trying to put a little bit on time varying volatility specification there. So if you have followed what Massimiliano was presenting this morning and also Karin a little bit was presenting, they were moving more on the conditional mean, let's say. What we are trying to do today, we are trying today in this talk, let's say, and also what with uh, Francesco and Matteo, we have done it in also last year and so on, is trying to move in the direction of working directly with, with quanta regression. We have different kind of paper with, with Matteo also and, and Aubrey that is on the floor working on this other way of quanta regression, but it's still, I think it's something that is coming up to be really interesting, let's say, for the future. So, okay, oops. Okay, I think that uh, all of you, well, we are in Center Banker, we are speaking about the, the, the fact that was coming up after the COVID-19 situation, let's say the pandemic was changing a lot, the way that people want to estimate model, let's say, but also the fact that also the Russian-Ukrainian war was coming up. So maybe one of the referee of one other paper was saying not is Russian-Ukrainian war, but is Russian invasion of, of Ukrainian. So maybe we should change also that one inside the, inside the paper and inside the presentation. But it's something that is coming up to be really interesting also from, for example, an energy point of view, an electricity or gas point of view, let's say. It. And it's also changing the, the interest of people to working with the indirectly tail, let's say, on, on that side there. Uh, this morning also, uh, if I remember, Massimiliano was citing the paper by Adrian et al. There were... The first one working a little bit on the tail risk part and try to quantify the, the uncertainty around this prediction. And as I stated, and as you have seen uh, this morning, let's say, it, all the, the time series model, let's say typically, just start working within the conditional mean or the variable of interest. What we would like to do it is a little bit changing because what we saw, what we thought about with, with Francesco and Matteo is try to work that conditional means a little bit more is not so sweet, let's say it's unsweeted to try to capture something that is skewness, uh, fat tails and outliers, as you were questioning to, to Monica about the skewness part also this morning, is something that within the quantile regression you can deal with. The quantile regression is not new, let's say, it's not that we invented something about quantile regression, but there is an old paper by, seven, by 78 on Econometrica by Kuenker and, and Bassett that was the first one introducing quantile regression model on that side, and they were using for exploiting the heterogeneous impact of, of covariates on different quantile levels of a variable of interest. Obviously, there is also some literature in economics and in econometrics that is moving in that kind of direction. Uh, Ferrara et al. was trying to introduce uh, some paper on, uh, on uh, MIDAS, so mixed data sampling and to quantile regression. There is also another paper of Massimiliano within uh, Andrea uh, Carriero et al. They were proposing to, to now cast a risk to, to GDP growth rate by using some sort of quantile risk model. There is also another paper from, uh, from Simona, the chair of the session, about quantile vector autogressive model. They were trying to uh, define some quantile response function in that direction. But what we saw, let's say, uh, with Matteo and, and, and Francesco, is that maybe something is missing on the direction of, of time varying volatility on that side. And this was starting from last year, let's say, and this paper that we got uh, with Matteo and, and Francesco on JBS, where we were start defining a sort of a symmetric, a different kind of continuous uh, probability score for forecasting. And we were trying to propose this sort of novel ACPS, a symmetric continuous probability score, that was able to try to evaluate 
and comparing density forecasting in particular from, from an asymmetric point of view. That was the starting point of our discussion with, with Matteo and, uh, and Francesco. And then we were continuously discussing, although we are not in the same university with, with Matteo through, through Skype, WhatsApp, and whatever, and try to think about where, what we can do it. And, and, uh, and that was the direction. And also in another paper that we got with, with Aubrey, uh, Dan, and Matteo, we start moving in the, in the direction of uh, mixed frequency, try to apply with uh, QVAR. Uh, that was trying to combine different frequency in, in macroeconomic and financial variables. So this one is a little bit the literature. I, I, I know that I miss a lot of people that were working, so I really apologize inside the paper. There is all the other references there, just to make a resume. Otherwise, I think I will spend all my 25 minutes on, on that slide. So moving to the, to the contribution, let's say. It. So this one is a nutshell. What we would like to do it, then we will going through a little bit of formulas, let's say, theoretical formulas is what we tried to do it in this paper. Uh, we were trying to propose uh, a framework for modeling time varying scale, uh, which is a, a multiplicative uh, component, let's say, of the variance inside the multivariate quantile regression models. And what we can do it is we can do it through a sort of the usual, let's say, representation of time varying volatility. That can be the stochastic volatility and the Garch model, let's say, the two uh, more known, let's say. So what we would like to provide you is a little bit general framework, and then we will just focus on these two uh, time varying volatility models there. So what we were able to do it is we build up the, the likelihood of this QVAR model uh, with, via, uh, through a sort of multivariate uh, asymmetric Laplace distribution. It's something that is done it in, in the literature, in, in the statistical literature. Uh, Petrail et al. is working in that kind of direction by trying to do it within multivariate asymmetric Laplace. So we took from the statistical literature, I'm more a statistician or a little bit statistician and econometricians. So we, we move on that kind of direction. So another thing that we were trying to do it is also we were coupling uh, stochastic volatility and Garch effect with mixture of Gaussian representation of asymmetric Laplace distribution that results in a sort of uh, standard deviation that was affecting also the conditional mean. That is something different a little bit from what uh, uh, Aubrey was doing in a Garch mean and, and also uh, um, uh, Jamie Cross were doing a Garch mean and stochastic volatility mean models. And and then we will reformulate the models to make sort of possible of uh, joint sampling uh, of all the trajectory of the time varying volatility. So if I didn't get in time to arrive at the end of the talk, let's say this one is just like one slide to give you the take, or if you get bored, for example, this is a take home result, just to let you know what we find a little bit. So the first things that you should know is that I'm not here to selling that one of the two time varying volatility specification is better than the other. What we are trying to provide you is the fact that by using time varying volatility inside this QVAR model, is providing you better result by using not time varying, so constant volatility. This one is one of the first take home result that you should take. So we, the, we introducing time varying volatility, it beat the constant volatility QVAR model. So this one is the first things. I'm not stating that stochastic volatility is better than Garch, but because it depends also on the, on, on the specification. And on the other way around, if I will arrive in time, hopefully, we will introduce some sort of model combination that is based on sort of quantized score weighting schemes. If you came through the poster, there was a poster by uh, Julia Mantuan and Knutare. They were doing this sort of uh, quantile, uh, quantile combination, let's say. It's something that we were look a little bit closer related to the, the, the literature to, to the quantile VAR within, stoch within stochastic and time varying volatility. What we saw is that these combination weights show a lot of significant variation over time, uh, in particular during the tails. So I will show you, hopefully, uh, the, the, the left and the right tails, let's say, and not focus on the, on, the, on the median, but in the paper we have all the different kind of quantiles. And then we saw that uh, QVAR uh, with time varying combination, with time varying weights, performs accurately well. The only point is that, as I said, we were not able to state exactly that you can use this one and state the QVAR within stochastic volatility is beating anything, but we can say that using time varying is beating, obviously, the constant volatility. So this one is just one of the, the take, these one are the take home results for, for the paper. Okay, so this one is just to make you a little bit of algebra, let's say, and a little bit of formula, despite all the formula that Monica was providing you, we are not going too much inside the tensor representation, it's not that, that kind of part. We're going a little, a little bit more simpler, maybe on the part of the conditional mean. So as you may see, we are not moving too much uh, about the conditional mean there, but we are just using the multivariate quantile regression through this MAL, that is the multivariate asymmetric Laplace distribution, that has three different kind of 
parameters that one should take care of, that is the location, the skew parameter, and also the scale metrics parameter there. So as you may see already from this slide, nothing is putting on the, uh, on the conditional mean, let's say. So also in the paper, we are just using the easy, let's say, Gaussian or normal distribution. One can apply anything like global log Schenker's prior or whatever, but it's behind, let's say, the scope of what we are presenting. We are presenting more and working more on the, on the conditional part. And the fact is that this representation here, as you may see, you have this D uh, theta one, this capital theta two and so on and so forth. This theta one and theta two are a sort of representation of the quantiles. It's where it's entering inside all the quantiles. Tj is the quantile of J series. And obviously, as you may know, the quantile is taking values between zero and one, that's for sure. And then we have this sort of D matrices that's just like the diagonalized uh, uh, square root of the scale matrices there. And then you have something that fees your correlation matrices with ones on the diagonal, let's say. So, this is just the starting point. So here there is no time varying volatility, nothing is changing at all. It's just like a Q bar, or we can say those are quantile regression model, let's say, with constant volatility. So what's gonna be happening here is that we, are, we, we build up in the paper, there is a little bit more theory, just to give you the flavor, we build up a, a, on a mixture representation of the, of the, of the Laplace, the, the MLA distributions there. And what is happening here is that we can rewrote as a sort of regression model, as a, as a quantile regression models, when we were depending on a sort of WT that is a sort of auxiliary variable, we can take care of it. This, this equation three is, let's say you have this XT that it can be just like uh, the Kronecker product with, when you're just taking care of any sort of regression like another, param another variable, but if you're just substituting it by including any sort of leg of, of your YT, it can just recall as a sort of quantile VAR model. In all the rest of the presentation, let's say we are just taking care of one leg of the VAR. You can extend it, I think, whatever you want it, but I think that what we would like to do it is better to have just one leg inside. So that, that's maybe the point. And again, since we are starting here, there is no heteroscedasticity as written in the title of this, of this slide. There is only homoscedastic variance for the conditional distributions. So nothing here at least is coming up related to T. As you may see, there is no T, let's say, coming up inside the D component or whatever, if you want just to, to simplify as, as possible there. So the, what we would like to do it is, this one is, I think is the core slide of, of, of all the presentation, is, is the fact that we would like to entering inside with, with, within this time varying volatility and within this heteroscedasticity component here, when you have this sigma that is no more, that is becoming time varying by, by, by fact of this subscript T there, but also by the fact that you have this sort of diagonal matrix HT that is taking care of the positive elements. And on the other way around, as, uh, as Danny Tillettain, the literature of stochastic volatility model, then we have this representation of A that is a sort of lower triangular where you have just once on the diagonal there. So in practice, this one allows us, let's say, to rewrote the quantile regression model, the multivariate quantile regression model that we saw before in a sort of time variance specification. And this one is what is coming up in formula five here. When you have, with respect to before, entering this HT representation in these uh, two, uh, two terms that are strictly related to the quantile because just remember that Q, theta one and theta two are enter, have inside, let's say, these taus that are the, the quantile of interest for us there. Okay, so the things is that one, one question that can come up is that why you decided to put this time varying volatility, let's say, is just not a matter of just like a theoretical stuff and just because we would like to add a more complicated model to what you have in the literature, but also it's due to the fact that if you thought about what Massimiliano was presenting this morning and also Karen is the fact that stochastic volatility in the conditional in mill model is becoming almost the, the basic things to add. If you want to, to, to forecast any macroeconomic variable, you for sure need to add inside stochastic volatility. You don't even take care about a BVAR model or a VAR model without stochastic volatility or without time varying volatility. So is this one the fact that allow us to start going in in direction, also thinking about why you don't try to put also uh, time varying volatility 
and, and the inclusion of, for example, stochastic volatility within this kind of model. So we start within the stochastic volatility, and the idea, there is also a slide, but maybe I will not have time to show you, is also that what we propose within a stochastic volatility, you can generalize to a gauge uh, model. Let's say, obviously, you should take care about all the constraints that you have within the gauge, but that's, that's the, only, the only things that you should take care. So in practice, what is entering is that you have this sort of HT that is what is your uh, variance, let's say the, the time varying uh, volatility by mean of the, of, the, of the stochastic volatility representation there. And, and this one is more or less the representation of the, that we saw before, let's say, by the fact that in practice this D, maybe here there was a, a little bit of mistakes, is that this D can be your DT, let's say, it's something related to your uh, to your uh, time varying uh, volatility part there. And this one is just the fact that what we saw it uh, when, when, when discussing and when trying to derive all the things with, with Matteo and, uh, and Francesco is that what, what's happening is that when you, we introduce the stochastic volatility in our sigmas, in our uh, scale metrics there, we, we came up that we include the square root volatility inside both. Uh, the parameter related to theta one and the parameter related to, to the variance, let's say. And in practice, what is can happening is that if you're conditioning on this a sort of auxiliary variable, let's say uh, WT or omega T as you want to call it, we resemble to have a sort of VAR uh, in, with stochastic volatility in mean. The main difference is that what we include here is a sort of uh, the, 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 the VAR SVM model is including a sort of vector of log volatilities, while in our case we are just using a square root of, of volatilities there. And the other advantage is, let's say, from a computational point of view, is the fact that we have a sort of efficient uh, algorithm from a computational point of view that allows us to speed up uh, the, the, the computational details. And is, I guess, coming up here. So in practice is we, we were able to write it down a sort of likelihood function as a sort of uh, based on the, on, the, on, the, on the draws from the different kind of, uh, of variable of interest. And this one allows us, let's say, to instead of working on a loop over like the time constraint, let's say, we're able to work directly on a sort of a uh, cycle or a loop that is working on the series, but the nice fact is not, is not that we are working within T or J, but it's the fact that when we're working within on the, on the, on the series, we are, we are so some sort uh, able to parallelize, because when you work within time, it's really hard to parallelize because what's happening today is really influenced on what was happening the day before and so on and so forth, where in this case we were able to write it down as a sort of uh, cycle over, over the, the series, let's say, and this one can be really easily parameterized, and in that term, let's say, as a, from a statistician point of view, is that we are replacing, let's say, an O capital T complexity within a one that is really, I think, O capital N, real, a little bit small, smaller, let's say. So this one is more or less what is the, the advantage. We provide something that is computational uh, feasible. And on the other way around, just to give you the flavor that I'm not saying something that is not true, we have also something related to the guard. The representation, it doesn't change too much with respect to what I was providing you before. The only thing is that you have this diagonal term of the HD that is no more depending on the exponential part as one is supposed to have when working within stochastic volatility, but is depending just on the, on, on the, on the root of, uh, on, on square of the power of two, let's say. And then, obviously, when you deal with the Garch model, you need also to take care of the um, stationary issues related to the parameter of the Garch specification because you have this, the, the this usual Garch representation for the, for the variance component there. And the fact is that, again, as what we have stated within the, the stochastic volatility mean, within the, guard, within the guard, we are able, let's say, to arrive at the same result. So if we condition on this auxiliary variable WT, we have we are able to have a, to arrive to a GARCH, with, uh, sorry, to a VAR with GARCH in mean representation model. And again, is that we are working within not a vector of volatility, but we are just working directly with a square root of volatility. And we have the same advantages, computational advantages that I show you uh, related to the uh, stochastic volatility uh, representation, let's say. So as I said, uh, we, we didn't take too much about which kind of prior we want to put on betas because the interest for us is working more or less on the time varying part and also on the quantile representation. So we just take care about the easy Gaussian uh, prior representation, but obviously we can just work within global local shrinkage prior or whatever on that, on that scenario there, but that's, that's not an issue. Then we have the same, uh, the same specifications, let's say, for the usual, represent, the usual prior representation that one shows that for the, for, the, uh, for the stochastic volatility and the gauge parameter there. 
So since I'm just, I have five minutes more, let's say, uh, quantized score, I think that Massimiliano and, and was giving a really good, uh, but also the others, really, what is a quantized score. So I will not spend too much time about the quantized score. It's one of the uh, tools that we are using to try to evaluate our, our, our main results there. And what we try to propose also uh, is try to start having a sort of combinational uh, of different model based on the on the quantile score. So uh, we were not building up a sort of quantile CRPS as we were showing before, but we were just working within the quantile scores and building up a sort of forecast combination based on a sort of time varying weights. So you have the weights that are changing and that are based on the on the past performances, and then we just take care about something that is more a constant average. Uh, weights on, on, on the forecast combination there. So just to arrive to the, to, to the results for the last three minutes or, or less, so we just treat to a really simple example, let's say, so we are not having a huge number of variables. It's not due to the fact that it's computationally intensive, but just for try to see what's going to be happening. So we decided to work within eight quarterly macroeconomic variables, and then we had also the NFSCI. And this one is just the representation. We do an in-sample analysis that is arriving until 2022, the second quarter. And we have a sort of out-of-sample analysis where we use a sort of rolling and expanding window with the length of 40 years when we're using a rolling window, obviously. And the out-of-sample is running, taking care of at least of the COVID-19 uh, um, uh, pandemic period, let's say. Okay, this one, I hope, well, I was sure that it was better, at least on my, on my computer. Uh, this one is a little bit of a presentation, let's say, of the result of the quantized score that is changing through time. And this one is related to two, dif to, to, uh, two different variables. So the left is more or less to a macroeconomic variable, so the GDP, while the right is related to the financial condition. And I hope you can see we have three different kind of colors here coming up. So there is the blue one that is related to the left tail. The, 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 the red one is related to the, uh, the medium one. And while the, the, the yellow one is related to the right tail there. So what one can see from the quantile score, let's say, or, or within stochastic volatility, let's say, is that what we see is that we were able to see some jumps around the, the drop that, that was happening a little bit inside the, uh, uh, the, the GDP, for example, representation, something coming up, uh, for example, for the, the, the 90%, there was a peak around 2014, and then there was also something coming up really strong, let's say, in the, in the left and the right tail, let's say, because as you may see, the red is a little bit smaller, when it was coming up, the COVID-19 pandemic, and then also we are still seeing that at the end, we were at the beginning, let's say, of the Russian in invasion of Ukrainian is something that is coming up also in particular for the, uh, for the left tail. While on the NFSCI, what we can see is that, well, still the, the, the medium part is not changing too much, but there is a lot of variation in particular during the, uh, this, this period, the, the COVID period, but also related to what is happening when there was the, the debt ceiling in 2008, for example, here when you have the, the left tail, let's say. So this one is one of the, uh, the results that we see. It. Then there is something that is making uh, us puzzling a little bit. So it was a lot of discussion with Francesco and, and Matteo about these results, because is what we were doing with a time varying combination weights. So here is changing a little bit the color of the lines. So I, I apologize, but the thing is that the red lines is related to the time varying specification with stochastic volatility. The yellow one is related to the gauge, while the blue one is related to the custom volatility model there. And so we, we, we show you what is happening to the NFSCI for two different kinds of the, the left and the right tails there. And so what we can see is that, uh, I hope you can see, is that the blue dots is almost near to zero. So it means that the quantile weight, the quantile VAR has almost zero weight for mainly, here I just showed two percentile, at least in just some period is having chan jumps, for example, during the COVID-19. But on the other way around, the other two, in particular, also the guards, but also the, the, the stochastic volatility, is having more, uh, is, is a little bit more persistent, let's say, uh, let's say through times there. So this one is related to how the weights are changing where we're dealing within the combinational part. And just to conclude, because until now, what I see is that I didn't compare too much with respect to the constant. So one can state, okay, until now, what you said, here it's just like that. When we're doing time varying combination weights, we, we are not putting too much weight related to the constant volatility part through the, through the estimation part. But from a forecasting point of view, yeah, this one is just for a table representation, but just because I think I have just one minute or two. This one is just the quantized score for two different kinds of, 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 of 
uh, quantized, let's say, the, the left and the right tail. So what I can see here, what, we, what you can see is that if you have a black, let's say a bold number, let's say, it means that it is the, one of the best model, let's say, it, and also it's a sort of ratio. So one, what you can take is that despite the variable that one is taking care, having a sort of time varying volatility model and also some sort of combination, in particular in a, in a multivariate setting, is providing you better results with respect to not having anything there, despite the quantile that you're taking care. Because also when you're taking the right or the left quantile, it doesn't matter, but the values are, except some, some small cases, for example, the unemployment rate, but for all the others, it seems that we are beating, let's say, the QVAR with, uh, with cost and volatility. So this one is just for clarification of what is happening. Inside the paper, we have also for all the other quantiles. Uh, this one is just for giving the, the, the idea of what's happening on the left and on the right, uh, on, on the right quantile there. And, uh, and that's just to, to conclude is that what we saw is that what we were proposing is a new uh, quantile regression, quantile uh, VAR model, when we have some sort of time varying volatility there, and again, I want to highlight and stress a little bit is that we are not stating that one of the two time variable volatility is the best. What we are stating is that we beat the cost and volatility model. And the second part that I would like to highlight uh, is that uh, is we are not working within the conditional mean directly, but we are working directly on the quantile. So this one is something that is a little bit changing your, 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 your idea, let's say, or, or your, how you work, let's say, because the literature until now is focused on conditional mean, and then you build up the quantile after the conditional mean. In this case, you're working directly within the quantile. So this one is one of the main aspects that we are trying to highlight in this paper, but also in the other paper that we have with uh, Aubrey and, 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 and Dan and, and Matteo. Uh, the paper is available on archive. There is an, a little bit of an old version. We are trying to provide a novel one, uh, obviously. And if you have questions, uh, feel free. And, and thank you. I hope to be on time. And thank you very much. Perfect. Thank you very much, Luca. The discussion is Matteo Mogliani from Brand de France. 10 minutes. Okay, thank you very much. So it's, uh, it's a pleasure to discuss this uh, very nice paper. Um, as Luca said, there is no surprise in the title. Uh, well, what I was expecting is some surprises uh, in, in, in the paper itself. Uh, so we discussed about that over the lunch. Uh, uh, we said that there are probably margins to improve the paper, not on the theory, but on the content of the paper, on the on some on some discussion of the results or of, of, even to, even your approach, uh, so that uh, likely uh, lead to a nice publication that I sincerely wish to you, even though neither of you passed by my poster. So, <laughs> so just uh, review a little bit. I have a couple of slides of comments uh, that I think that are most most important uh, for this paper. So just to review a little bit of the model. So what you are doing here, uh, very simple, it's worse, yeah, okay. Yeah, it was me, but, uh, okay. So uh, what Luca, um, Matteo, that I had the pleasure to meet for the first time today, uh, are doing here is uh, simply, well, simply, of course, not so simply, but moving from a, a Bayesian VR, which is quite standard, we saw some uh, some uh, representation of the Bayesian VR today, to a m little bit more sophisticated uh, version of the Bayesian VR, which is the Bayesian quantile VR, using uh, this uh, um, uh, multivariate asymmetric Laplace uh, definition for the error structure. And uh, giving, providing this uh, this form for the for the Bayesian quantile VR. Here we say this is uh, uh, this is the scale matrix. This is a correlation matrix. Here we have the square root of the correlation matrix. Of course, it works because this is at least asymmetric, positively definite. And they are not happy with that. They also move to uh, something even more complicated, which is a Bayesian quantile VR with time varying volatility. So I. Honestly, in my reading of the paper and this discussion, I, I didn't go through the, 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 the algebra here. I, I totally trust you uh, on, the, on the final results, uh, which are, in the end, something very similar to the Bayesian quantile VR, but in addition, uh, the, we found this uh, 
a term here, which is the result of the Cholet's uh, lower triangular matrix, and most importantly, this h square root of h here, which is the, the time varying volatility matrix here in your model. So what is the time varying volatility model uh, in, uh, in, uh, in this paper? They, 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 they are not happy with just one classic uh, uh, stochastic volatility. They, they discuss two. Uh, time varying volatility approach. Uh, the first one is stochastic volatility itself. So as we say, this is uh, the, the standard representation of uh, uh, an autoregressive, which is in your paper, I guess, it's uh, a random walk um, process for the, for the uh, log volatility, so which leads to something which is similar to a VR, as you say, the VR with stochastic volati volatility mean. But here we don't have the volatility, we have the, the square root, so it's not exactly the same thing. And we also have a Garsh type of time varying volatility, which leads to something which is similar to a VR with Garsh in mean, but not with the volatility itself, but rather a square root. So what are the main contributions, given all that of this paper? Is the first one, to my opinion, um, I'm not completely okay with the full literature, but I have the feeling that already considering a quantile VR in Bayesian framework, which is already a, a nice feature of the paper, uh, by uh, building upon the literature, the existing literature on Bayesian quantile regression and the, using this uh, multi, multi, uh, multivariate uh, asymmetric applies for the, for the errors. Uh, second contribution is extending the quantile VR to time varying volatility and develop here a, a, a sample that I couldn't really check because the, the, the technical appendix was missing in the paper, I guess. <laughs> so, but uh, but I, I had some idea, maybe I'm wrong, it, it should look like the, the, the sample provided by um, Farof with us. Uh, the, uh, no, it's not the Jacquier and quarters, no, it's something. Okay, okay, okay. Oh. I'm sorry. No, but uh, it's okay. Uh, to, so they de develop a sample in pseudo stochastic volatility and pseudo Gearch models, which is nice. And show that the, on the empirical side, they show that the quantile VR augmented with those time varying volatility may improve on one step ahead forecast. And also, if your question is why considering stochastic volatility and Gearch, is uh, probably it's, uh, it's a posterior, uh, um, let's say, addition to the paper, but I don't know. So they, they show that the combining almost scedastic and heteroscedastic quantile VR forecast with both those time varying volatilities and time varying weights may improve the one step ahead forecast. So a lot of, a lot of material here. So some comments. First of all, quantile regression with time varying volatility. Uh, this is a, a serious question I got many times. I don't work with all my time with, with those models, but I got this question. Oh, why could this uh, time varying volatility be empirically relevant? So in a linear regression, time varying volatility accommodates for the changes in distribution of the shocks. But in the, in the baseline, uh, take just the baseline quantile regression, not the quantile VR regression, what could argue that this time kind of model already accommodates some of those features. So here, this is, this is the quantile regression models, and you have that uh, the fat tails that you always uh, look for using those models are generated by the asymmetry in the coefficients. This term here shifts the location of the targeted quantile. This term here rescates the shocks for the quantile. And as you can see here and here, you have some terms that already are indexed at time t. So I honestly believe that adding some flexibility by introducing this time varying volatility is, uh, is good for the model. But maybe the paper should elaborate. That, that I think it will be the first time. Uh, more on the relevance of time varying volatilities in a, in a quantile regression and quantile VR framework. So I couldn't find any paper discussing uh, very clearly why it should be important. Another comment is on the efficiency of the sampler. So you, you, you claim, you claim it in the slides, but also in the paper that, that there is the, the sampler you de develop is more efficient. So can you provide more details on the efficiency? Can you provide Monte Carlo simulations just to 
to, to, to get a grasp of the efficiency of the sampler. And something that we completely forgot nowadays to do is just to run some conversion diagnostics and show what are the diagnostics for, for the sample. On time variation, so time variation for the volatility is as often uh, the case, a part, just a part of the broader picture uh, for, for in terms of flexibility. So I, I don't want you to, to, to suggest to accommodate time variation also in the model parameters in this paper, but this paper I think should tackle this, uh, this, this, uh, this point, but just discussing, uh, uh, already discussing this, uh, the, the, um, the, uh, the fact that uh, you are picking up just time, time variation in the volatility, but uh, the, you, have, you can have also this, uh, this uh, time variation in the signal, in the noise, also in the parameters, and suggest in your paper a way forward in order to accommodate also for uh, some uh, time variation in the parameters. And finally, uh, on the forecast horizon. So th this is a very important point. Um, uh, the VR models are often used and very useful to get multi-step iterative predictions. But in the, in, the, in, the, uh, in the quantile VR framework, we are still limited in some way to one step ahead. So Simone works a lot on that, and it's a nice paper. But I, uh, I would like to discuss with Simone about that paper, but I think in order to get, uh, let's say, density forecast at uh, each step ahead, computed through a, a, a quantile VR uh, in, in an iterative uh, way, uh, it's, it's still quite complicated to understand it. So uh, it would be nice, uh, since the paper, of course, limits to a one step ahead, it's nice to, to clearly discuss this issue in the paper since we don't have, this is because we don't have many papers on quantile VRs. So it would be nice that at least the first papers working on that, they could discuss all these issues that maybe they will be solved in a, in a future literature, uh, in a few years maybe. Um, I, was, I have just, uh, I hope I have uh, one, a minute, perfect. So some additional comments on uh, mostly on the empirical analysis. So how well the, the, the model uh, does compare to, uh, a, let's say, a standard B, B var with stochastic volatility, uh, a la Carriero, Clark, and Marcellino, not the one you, you are citing in the paper, the other one which I discovered a few days ago is for coming into uh, in a G, uh, GMCB. Um, second point, how well does the quantile VR model compare to univariate quantile regression once you include also lags of additional exogenous predictors? So it would be just like you take one equation and you put lags of endogenous plus lags of exogenous, so you don't have all this uh, VR system, but you have uh, just a univariate quantile regression with all the ingredients of the VR. I would like to know, uh, I would be curious to see how this uh, uh, compared to your quantile VR. Uh, then on the results, uh, the, you only focus on quantile score. What well, would be nice to also provide an assessment on the entire density forecast here uh, using different metrics, uh, CRPS, low score, or whatever. But this would imply, and this is quite uh, important in the, in, the, in the literature, imply a choice of the computation of the entire density from discrete uh, a discrete number of quantiles. So you can use a fine grid of quantiles and then try some uh, gardener smoothing or just, or use this uh, skewed team matching approach, it's very popular nowadays. So uh, it's mostly up to you, but you, you, you can increase the, um, let's say the, the, uh, the, the amount of, uh, of uh, results in your paper, you, reading also the, those, uh, those issues here. And uh, finally, we'll uh, make a bridge uh, towards the, the, the work of, uh, of Simone. Yeah, should, should the paper, the, this paper discuss a sort of stress testing approach? So forecasting quantile, a given quantile Q or for variable Y, conditional quantile Q prime of variable X. So could, could also you treat in this framework? I, I think that the answer is yes, but could you do it in this paper to, to approach the, um, 
the, um, the, the, the issue of stress, test testing through this um, through the, the, the proposed model uh, some similar way as Simone did in uh, his work. Thank you. Thank you, Matteo. Let's collect a few questions from the floor. A lot. Please state your name and affiliation so everybody knows. So, hi, um, very nice presentation. I'm John Perez from the ECB. Um, I wanted to ask you a little bit more on, on your idea of the combination. Because normally when we think about combination, we think about different, you know, variables that are important, you know, for different models that are important for, you know, to, to capture different aspects of the economy. In this case, you are, if I understand correctly, you are basing your combination of different types of stochastic volatility, right? But then when I think about this, and when I see your results, that sometimes one stochastic volatility is more important than others, and, and so you are picking up different weights, and this you know, gives you an idea. Um, I, I, I'm thinking how I can express to my policymaker, you know, how to explain, you know, now I pick this one, now I pick the other one, because I think now this volatility is different than this one. So how can you conceptualize this idea that what you want to capture there? And another point that I have is, is when I hear you're choosing three specific aspects, three different stochastic volatility models, but I, I could think on a generalization, which is what the machine learning models are, are doing. So you don't, you don't pick a one, you just allow you know, machine learning to decide what kind of nonlinearity you're gonna find. So how could you maybe make the, the match between these two types of literature? Thank you. Uh, I'm Boże Mazur, and I am not from the ECB. <laughs> I'm from the National Bank of Poland. And I have three questions. Uh, first, uh, you have this term WT, right? And is it IID? Uh, because I don't, un I, I probably I missed the time structure or time dependence structure on WT. And here my question would be perhaps you could give up uh, the full vectorized stochastic volatility and only have something like stochastic volatility in, inside WT, right? What would happen then? Uh, second question related to that is, is it exponential? I am not, don't, don't fully understand it. it's conditional exponential. Uh, is it exponential distribution, right? Is WT, yeah. So what if you make it gamma with estimated parameter, right? Uh, probably it spoils your Gibbs sampling scheme, <laughs> that's my guess, but it's a single parameter. And third is, uh, what's the gain from the conditional uh, correlation metrics? Uh, because my question would be, what if you simplify this, uh, uh, this stochastic volatility into single factor, but, but instead uh, go for something like dynamic conditional correlations, right? Uh, because I'm not sure if I picked up correctly uh, the gain from the multivariate nature of your model, right? Because if your model is multivari multivariate, what's, what's the point for the, from the forecasting point of view, right? What's the value added? Thank you. Hey, this is Davide Della Monaca, Bank of Italy. I have a couple of quick two questions. One more technical about the difference between GARCH and stochastic volatility specification. Uh, in one case, GARCH uh, find the likelihood function is much easier. In the other case, stochastic volatility seems a bit more uh, uh, difficult. So I didn't understand what the difference in the two sampler. And the other question is more about, uh, it's uh, reconciliated with the Matteo discussion. Uh, you, you put together two models that both suffer, one the VR or over parameterization and the quantile regression with the problem of to estimate a lots of parameter with few, with the same number of observation and uh, and then you add as well stochastic volatility, right? So you have a lot of parameter there. And uh, for example, when you a standard uh, quantile regression, you use var uh, Bayesian techniques to do uh, dimension reduction because you have parameter uncertainty, right? You have a lot of parameter with the same number of observation. So adding again, another layer of uncertainty because you have more parameter to estimate. So it's a bit, uh, it's a bit, uh, it's, so it's, 
it's, it's uh, stuff, right? Stuff to to extract lots of information from the same number of observation. I mean, uh, lots of uh, parameter there. Yes, uh, Daniele Bianchi, Queen Mary University. Thanks, Luca, for the talk. Very interesting. I guess I have very two simple questions, and apologies, I'm not familiar with the multivariate Laplace. Uh, the first question was uh, the the obviously you buy flexibility and you know uh, computational uh, flexibility, but obviously one cost that you pay is that the third moment is not time varying, as far as I understood, right? So you time varying volatility, but skewness is constant all the time. And obviously, the two things they have an interplay. So I was wondering if you, you know, what's your thought about it? Uh, if your thought about extension or having time varying time variation in the third moment, that's probably related to the WT comment before. Uh, and then the second, the second question that I have is, uh, uh, I was curious if, uh, again, I'm not familiar with the framework, but if you can capture correlations across quantiles, because I think that would be, from a narrative perspective, that would be interesting. For instance, if you have upside risk on PPI that translate in downside risk in industrial production, or, you know, this type of correlations, uh, if you can elaborate on that. Thank you. Other points? Uh, I'm I'm Aubrey. Uh, I'm also co-author Luca and Matteo. So, um, so what I so it's great that you're using my my method that's just got accepted at journal econometrics. Um, so I think the efficiency of sampler. So what we did was for the SV and mean approach. What you could do is what what is the alternate approach is sort of particle Gibbs with ancestry approach. So what you could do is compare that, and that's what we did in the, our, our paper, and we showed that the part of who gives with ancestry is has path degeneracy issues, so, or you get highly autocorrelated methods. So that's just, this is not a question, but that's one comment you could do to show the efficiency of your method for the SVM mean, saying that you're not going to have this if you use the alternate methods that is used. One last one, and I have one as well. <laughs> yeah, Bernd Schwab from the ECB. Uh, so a linear Gaussian VAR can be estimated equation by equation. So if there's n variables, it's n univariate time series regression. And so in your uh, in your settings, there are n variables and p quantiles. So I was wondering under which conditions does this boil down to just running n times p uh, univariate. Uh, quantile regressions. Yeah, and we are late, but uh, I cannot uh, refrain from asking a question as well. I'm probably the only one unrepented frequentist uh, econometrician in this room, but uh, from the frequentist perspective, there is a one-to-one -one matching between uh, time variant volatility gauge and quantiles. That's actually my first paper on the in the area with the caviar with Rob Engel was actually make, making the point. But I think more importantly, one of the advantages of quantile regression is that it's a semi-parametric technique. You just have to specify the dynamics of the quantile, then you don't care about what the likelihood is. And it seems to me that going this route, you are mired into all the problems of the likelihood. You know, the question that we're asked I point exactly to this, you know, okay, you go with time variant volatility, what about the exponential distribution? What about time variant skewness? We can go on. What about time variant kurtosis and, 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 and so on? So it seems to me that this way of uh, modeling creates other problems. How much time I have it for answer? Sure. So, so let's say until 20, and then we, <laughs> we steal uh, some time from the coffee break. OK, so I think I will not have time to answer to all the questions, in particular from, from Matteo, which uh, I thanks for, for the discussion. And I apologize for not sending this supplementary, but it was a really hard and tough period, this one, and for not coming to your poster, obviously. And that, that's my fault, completely. I was discussing with Monica about daughters that were more important, let's say. I was showing her the photos of my daughters. I think it was more important than, no, I'm joking about it. I will come later on, for sure. So I completely agree with you about the fact that we need to motivate better the, the, the part of the empirical. We know that is a little bit the, the difficult part, let's say, of the paper. More a statistician, Matteo, too. Francesco maybe is the one more from 
central banker, let's say. And so we know that we need to motiv motivate better that kind related to uh, time varying in regression. So the, the time varying in the um, parameter, well, that's something that is opening a really huge. We can also add neural network. We can also, let's say, we want to stay within the, since it was the first time that we we're working within let's say time varying volatility despite uh, uh, Simone, but is a frequentist, let's say not, not, not the dark side of the Bayesian part. But that was the point is that we want to be simple as possible, let's say, uh, just to give you the idea. Uh, the effect of multi-head uh, prediction is something that we didn't uh, go and look at too much. We just focus on the first one. And uh, efficiency of the sampler, we run something. Uh, if I remember, there is a supplementary material, and that's my fault completely. If I remember, but also Matteo can add anything, but it's something that we run it for sure on the, on, on the server, but maybe we didn't include, because I think that the paper has a lot of pages, a lot of things inside, adding also the code analysis inside the, the paper, I think is getting a little, and also sometimes it's not so get uh, accepted inside the paper, let's say it. The comparison with BVOR stochastic volatility, uh, let's say that is a different kind of approach. They are working within conditional, so as I said, we are not working within conditional mean, let's say, but we're working directly, that, that kind of paper was working directly on conditional mean, let's say, so that's maybe a little bit more hard. Maybe in simulation we can try to do some sort of comparison by taking, but, but I think it's a little bit more hard, let's say. The things of the univariate quantile with additional regression is something that it's really nice, and I've done it in a lot of paper with Francesco when we're working with electricity prices, but in this time I forgot about it, and I think it would be interesting, at least because we can show what's happening in the regression. Uh, CRPS, uh, uh, that's something that we didn't look at. We just focused on the quantized score, honestly. Uh, will be, and we can try to look at uh, with Matteo Francesco. Uh, st stress testing approach, I think it's, so the paper, if we had all these things, and plus the stress, stress testing, we became, I think, 60 pages, and is already long enough, I think. And maybe for a second paper, or maybe we, because we focus on just on the forecasting scenario, and stress testing, Simone has done in the paper that I was citing with uh, Shakis Vili, if I remember correctly the name, and if I pronounce it wrongly, it's not, it's, sorry. And uh, so maybe it's something that we should also investigate with, with Matteo Francesco. And how much I have it? One minute more? <laughs> For the audience part, it's, uh, so the combination is made across model, let's say, uh, across model, not across variable. Let's say we take each variable separately. Uh, I didn't get too much about the machine learning techniques on the stochastic, on the time varying part. It's something that Massimiliano was doing a little bit with the Dirichlet, like, let's say Dirichlet process, but as you were stating this morning, you were kicked out by, by the referee, let's say, because I think it's still, no, because I think it's still a little bit of problem. I'm working within Dirichlet process. With Monica, we have work about it, and I saw there is a little bit, really, really difficult, let's say, to work and to sell to the community, to the statistician, you can sell it really quickly, let's say, because Danson has done a lot of paper, but to the econometric side, I think it's a little bit hard to make people thinking about this sort of infinite representation, and also the neural network that Karen was doing for the time varying volatility, I think is a little bit of a difficult to think about it, also from a sampling point of view, let's say. Re regarding to uh, WT, that was one of the main things about it. So that's something that, uh, we just take on the exponential part, I think, because, yeah, it was just a data augmentation things, let's say, just like a sort of, as I said, it's a sort of auxiliary variable, just that, that augmentation one. Maybe we should thought about it. And, well, if we open the stuff about third moments, fourth moment, I think that we can discuss for well, doing you the... open the second moment. No, no. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, but moving to the third one, fourth one, we can continue during dinner, I guess, but I think we can continue also in the coming days, weeks, because I think it's something interesting, let's say, but I think that, as you said, all of you, let's say, or at least also the referee of the paper, let's say, was saying is that it's a lot, it's complicated, let's say, already the model in this way. If you start third model, you get even complicated. So from a certain point, we are trying to, as also I was stating to Matteo before, is being, let's say, not easy because it's not so easy, let's say, but we already introduced something that is really complicated. I think also having third, fourth, uh, that's something that is a little bit becoming really cumbersome and uh, again, I think is maybe in the future there will be time to moving also in that kind of direction. Nowadays we move to the second order, let's say, but also when we work with conditional mean within time varying, we're still thinking about moving to third, fourth moment, and then we open. And, but I think it's something interesting. And uh, with Matteo and Francesco, those Aubrey that we're working on that direction would be something that, that would be nuts. And obviously for the others, we can discuss otherwise. We are taking thank too much you. time. Thank so you thank you much. very much again. Thank you, everybody.